This video is going to be all about the electrics in the 107 SL. We are going to be seeing if we can get all the instruments in the cluster to work and all the lights along the bottom. Then we're going to be moving on to this central console here and seeing if we can get the fans to work, the lights behind the central console, um, the hazard lights, all the indicators. So I'm going to start with the hazard switch. There's a few things in the SL that should work with no keys in the ignition. The first thing is the hazard switch. When you turn that on, you should have two flashing lights on the dash, obviously, but this should also be flashing and it's not. So that either means that the bulb inside this switch is knackered or that the relay behind the cluster is not working properly or not connected properly. So we're going to have a look at that first. We've done video on getting um, the cluster out, but basically these clusters are just a push fit. If you can sometimes get them out just by pulling here, if you can't get them out by pulling there, you could maybe take the speaker out and just push like that. You can get special tools to um, that slot down there and lever it out, but you need to be really careful that you do not damage the um, dashboard trim doing that. This cluster has been out in and out a million times before. Now, when you take it out, don't pull it too far out towards you because it will be connected by a bunch of wires. Before we take this cluster out, another thing that should be permanently on is the clock. And normally you can hear these clocks ticking and I cannot hear that clock ticking plus I don't think the hour or the minute hand has actually moved. I could be wrong. Now, we do have a whole variety of different gauges and clusters, etc. So I'm pretty certain that we could just replace that clock from another gauge if it's not working. We come to take the cluster out. It's going to be different on your car, but on the early cars, there's three electrical wires you need to disconnect. And on this car, you'd also need to disconnect the um oil line and the speedometer that hasn't been connected up yet anyway so we're just going to connect that central cluster switch there the clock wire there and this plug Once you've got the cluster out you can see the relay which is here the flasher relay i'm just going to take that out and have a look at it this is the relay here it's quite dirty but we've got a cleaner one here and you can see that the part number zero three three five two hundred double oh seven that is the relay there i'm just gonna put this relay in the car and see if that light more actually starts working so interestingly enough when we swap relays we're getting that light lighting up but we're not getting the clicking sound in the relay so that relay is knackered but that bulb is fine so it makes me wonder whether there's just a bad connection in here which isn't lighting up that bulb let's try swapping them back over and seeing if that cures the problem and sure enough actually just taking that relay out and swapping it over we ascertain that this light is actually working it was just a loose connection just before we move on from the hazard light flasher if your hazard light light is just coming on permanently and you're not hearing that clicking there's a good chance the relay itself is knackered and as i say that's the number there to get a new one next up i'm just very quickly going to put a bit of electrical tape around that wire because this is a 12 volt permanent 12 volt here and if that wire was to touch any of the metal of the car um that would cause a short circuit so we'll just put a bit of electrical tape around that this is our parts car here and we're going to take some of the central console wiring and use it in the project car that we're doing and one of the pieces that we want to take is this here which when you turn the lights on a bulb should come on and illuminate this here and this wiring is all intact and it's got this special fitting here now you would think you could just pull that apart but there's a little tab in there you have to bend back very slightly so i'm just going to put a dab of oil on there to try and help it because it's very easy to break that tab we've managed to unplug that and we should just be able to undo the earth wire here and very gently take out this bulb here get this fitting here out you're just going to put a flat blade screwdriver in there and twist and that should just pop out like that without breaking you just need to get a spanner on there and take that off now it can be quite tricky getting these light bulbs out especially if they haven't been out for 50 years so the way to do it is if you have that little brass circle facing you you push down the light bulb and turn it 
back about 10 degrees and it should pop out. So if you see down there, that little slot, it just slots in, pushes down, difficult to show you, and twists that way to lock it in. So on the other light bulb, this light bulb does not want to come out and it just really helps if you know how it's supposed to come out. Okay, we've got it there eventually. Just before you go rushing out and buying a new light bulb, if you can still get these, I'm not sure that you can, it's worth getting a nine volt battery on there and just making sure that it is a light bulb that's knackered and not the connection. That one is knackered. This is the one that came with the car. You can see that that works fine. So we'll swap that into the proper, proper wiring loom. You've got that light bulb back in the wiring loom. My advice would be to actually test it just by holding it across the car battery and it should obviously light up like so. Back in the project car now, and this is the end of the lead that plugs into the um, gearbox surround line. It doesn't matter too much which one of these four bolts you use as the earth. If you've got your central console on, you'll find it difficult getting that bolt out. We're gonna use this top right hand corner bolt here. Now, when we took the bolt out, it didn't have a washer on it. So we're just gonna put a little spring washer on there. Use this as our earth and test and see if everything works. Everything wired up, we've got that plugged in there. We've got this on an earth. Now, in theory, when we turn the lights on with no ignition, I mean, keys not in the ignition, that light should light up. Let's just turn the overhead lights off, see that better, see if that's working. Yes, it is. So each step of the way, I'm just testing that everything still works. The relay still work, both indicators here still works. The light is still coming on down there when we turn the light on, so that's all good. Another thing worth mentioning is this special fitting here for the um, gearbox surround should have a clip around it like that. And this clip actually clips to the back of one of these posts here. So this fitting is completely hidden out of the way on one of the back posts. I'll do that when I take the central console out because it's a little bit fiddly to do that in with the central console in situ. We're gonna move on to the blower fans now. So the blower fans only work when the ignition is on. So I'm just gonna turn that one click. You would expect the blower fans to come on but they're not actually connected. But there is a problem. The voltmeter set to 20. I can see that there is 12 volts coming through there. But when I connect these two in there like that, the, the fans aren't turning on. However, when I connect my trusty nine volt battery directly, you can hear that the fans are coming on. So that tells me that that earth there is not earthed properly or not so working. If my theory is correct, all I need to do is connect an earth directly to the negative terminal of the battery like so, connect that positive to there and those fan blower motors should work in theory. When I turn on the ignition and turn on the fan, fan blowers, they do indeed work. When you turn the lights on the cluster, what should happen is two light bulbs should light up and light up the instrument cluster. And you should also see a series of lights light up the um, air con light here and the slider switches, etc. And that's not happening at the moment. We've got most of the lights working, but the two um, dashboard lights are not working and these lights here are not working properly. And the reason for that is almost certainly um, this little rear stat or potentiometer in here because the two dash lights and all of these lights down here, apart from the gearbox surround light, which is wired directly, all go through this rheostat or potentiometer, which is basically just a dimmer switch. And those dimmer switches often go bad, basically through lack of use. So you might find that your car's absolutely fine until the first time you drive it in the dark, and then you don't have any lights here or down here. And it's basically because the, um, switch here has got corrosion on it or gunk or something else. I'm going to try and show you how this potentiometer should work. I've set the voltmeter to resistance 
and I'm just holding the terminals over the grey and the green wires on the back of the potentiometer and when I do that if I can do this and turn this you will see the resistance increasing or decreasing down to zero which would mean the lights on fully bright or up to about 26 ohms which would mean the lights are dim so if your potentiometer is working fine if you hold a voltmeter across the green and the gray terminals and set the voltmeter to resistance you should see the resistance changing as you turn it if you see the resistance at one or infinite or something like that it means it's not working now all that's happening on the back of here is you basically got a fin going back and forwards scraping over a coil of copper wire and depending where the fin is on the copper wire determines how much resistance is in this little switch here <clears throat> now what some people do which happened on this car here is the potentiometer or dimmer switch stopped working so they basically just cut it out the system and rewired the car so that things weren't going through here anymore and that is one solution another solution is to drill out these two little um, rivets here and just take the top off and just clean the top of that spring and the bottom of the metal plate that moves across it and you'll probably find that that starts working um, once you've done that and another method is simply to move this back and forwards a hundred times and the action of that metal scraping across the spring will often clear any corrosion off it and you might see that this miraculously starts working so the first thing i'm going to do on our switch is just try moving it back and forwards a hundred times one two three four five six all the way up to a hundred to see if i can just get that working by doing that I've tried wiggling the switch back and forwards a hundred times method and that hasn't worked. So I'm going to take the cluster out and have a closer look at that potentiometer. So this is the cluster out the car and this is a good example of what shouldn't happen. When you touch those two terminals there, you should see that change and it's not changing, which basically means that is not working. I've drilled these two rivets out and just taken the top off here. And you can see that there's obviously moisture has got in there. It's a little bit rusty in there, but you can also see the level of corrosion in so there. So if you were doing this yourself, you would probably drill these out all the way and get some long, thin screws. But this spring is basically what causes the resistance. And as you turn the um, knob on the rear stat this is basically just changing that resistance so the green wire is attached to that center pin there if you look carefully you can see that there are two raised bits on here that are supposed to be on that track and move round similarly on the end of here there's a raised bit which moves round on the spring so if i clean this up with a little Dremel tool, this will probably work just fine. When you take this to pieces, there are these two small springs, and those springs fit in that hole, and that hole. The idea being that they press down on the front of the plate here, and also on the back of the plate to ensure good contact. So make sure you don't lose those springs, and when you put the whole thing back together, make sure you put those springs back in. But you will find that once you have cleaned that up with a little Dremel tool or emery paper, that contact there, and the two contacts, the two runners here, and also that track, you will find that that probably works perfectly well. We happen to have a working spare, so I'm not gonna do that in this particular case. If there's anyone out there that needs a spare rear stat, let me know. I will put this together at some stage, but not in this video. Now you can still buy these units here. I think they're about 65, 85 pounds, and I will leave a link to where you can get them. Um, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to cut the green wire and the grey wire and I'm going to put in the potentiometer from here, which I know is working, and see if that cures the problem. So I've cut out the working rheostat or potentiometer dimmer switch from here, our broken circuit board. We know that works and I've wired it in just using these little plugs here as a temporary measure. I'm just going to put a little bit of electrical tape around there so but there's no danger that... Um, we short the whole thing out when we put the cluster back in and then we'll see if that works. Nothing pretty, but as I say, if this works, we'll come back and wire or solder that properly. We're going to test the dimmer switch, make sure that it does actually do what it's supposed to do, dim down to nothing and then up to maximum. Now that dimmer switch, incidentally, is also 
linked to the hazard light as well. So the hazard light dims as you move the dimmer switch, but the shift light doesn't. That's on a separate circuit. An interesting feature of that hazard switch there is that that will come on even if the potentiometer or weir stat in your dash is faulty. It just won't dim down when you turn the dimmer, but it'll still come on. So we're just switching our voltmeter to 20 volts. And I'm just going to show you, and we're going to put this terminal on the earth of the car, some metal of the car. And I'm just going to demonstrate that here, that second pin there is the permanent 12 volts. Okay, if I move the dimmer switch, it makes no difference at all on that. This pin here, okay, if I move the dimmer switch on the dash, you can see that that moves down from about seven up to 12, okay? Now I'm going to attempt to do something that I may yet live to regret. I know that many other people have, is I'm gonna take the cover off this switch. And often when you do that, all the wires pop out. And unless you know where they should be to start off with, it's an absolute nightmare. So I'm gonna do it really carefully and try not to lose any of the wires. Let's do it this way around. So now many people have actually asked this in the past is they've taken that switch off and forgotten which way the, around the wires go. So I'm hoping that this video shot may well help you. Um, as you look down on the plug, you've got a purple and gray here. And then I believe that's a red and white. And here I believe that's a green and red. That's your earth brown. And that is your black and green, I think. And that's another black and green quite difficult to see. Just bear in mind when you look at this, it'll be upside down. So just to reiterate, this red and white wire here is the permanent 12 volts. And this purple and white wire here is the wire that is carrying the variable 12 volts. I cannot bring myself to put that cover back on without cleaning it first. I'm just going to go over that with a little scrubbing brush and some water and then put that back on. I'm just going to mention one thing which is really, really, really counterintuitive. On this plug here, you've got a permanent 12 um, volts going to there. So you would not expect, if I touch the earth with the other terminal, you would not expect that voltmeter to move. But this is the bit that's counterintuitive. On the terminal that is um, got the variable voltage here, if I put that probe in there and touch the earth, you can see the, on the voltmeter that that it actually connects to earth. Now, I don't know why that is. Even with a degree in electronic engineering, I can't figure out. All that I know is it, it seems to work. And now, for some strange reason, when we connect our bulb to here, what was worrying me was that this was actually connected to earth but in actual fact apparently it should be because when we now turn the lights on you can see that that light bulb lights up and furthermore you can see that the dimmer switch makes it dim and undim so we have now fixed all the lights in this car we've got a permanent 12 volt source to the shift and that bulb works fine we've got a variable 12 volts to these lights there's one light here there's one light here and one light here and those illuminate the sliders and then there's another light bulb behind there so we're just waiting on some of those light bulbs but now that we've got the wiring in place and correctly wired everything works We've fixed the fan, ascertained that that had a dodgy earth, which is why that wasn't working. Um, all the dashboard lights work as expected. So we can start to put this back together and move on. The last thing I do before I end this video is to see if I can get the low fuel light working. Now the fuel tank is not actually connected in this car, but this here is the fuel level reader. And you can hear that basically there's a float inside there. And when there's no fuel in the car, that float is at the bottom. And should, if I plug this in there, like so, and put that upright, that float should be right at the bottom, obviously, because there's no, that's not sitting in a fuel tank. And when I turn on the ignition on this car, we should see the little red triangle come on. 
which we do just about every day we must get one or two questions about part numbers where to get parts from etc and my advice is always to phone Mercedes first because very often they will be cheaper than anywhere else and this little potentiometer or dimmer switch is a case in point if you pop that part number in Google or eBay etc you'll come out with a range of prices ranging of about 80 to 110 pounds but they are actually available from Mercedes in the UK for 54 pounds so if you need one of those Call Mercedes, that's the cheapest place. There's at least five of these light bulbs in the car. They're called 286 dashboard lights. There's one in the fog light switch. When you pull it forward, their light should come on. There's two behind the sliders, one behind the control knob, and one on the control panel. So cheapest place to get those is probably eBay. You can get 10 of them for £1.99. If you've got a spare five minutes in your life, I would urge you to go and check out these guys here, APA Industries slash Catalog or Euro Parts. They have a huge range of parts for the SL. And the way to find them is just to change that to Mercedes, put 450 SL in 1973, and then just scroll through and have a look at what they've got because you can save yourself a fortune and you'll find that a lot of places like the SL shop, etc., actually get parts from these guys as well. Everything from fuel accumulators, blower motors, fuel sending units, and bulb holders, electrical contact switches, ignition valves, you name it, you can get them from these guys. And what I normally do is I'll just make a note of the euro number, then I'll go over to rockauto.com, put that in, and rockauto.com will give me the retail price, because these guys here only supply to garages or wholesalers. Um, rockauto.com, they'll send to UK, Europe, etc., and obviously the States as well.